بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome everyone to the Project Yahya podcast. This is your host Asad Khan along with Hafiz Musab Qazi. And um, we were supposed to have another one of our friends on but he couldn't make it. Khair. Today alhamdulillah we have a very important guest with us. Uh, Doc, uh, Professor uh, Senahid Halilovic. Uh, Professor Senahid, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me and uh, thanks everybody. So today as we once again hear the cries of genocide, this time in Gaza, Palestine, it is imperative that we hear from those who have experienced genocide firsthand. Our guest today is one of the very few people who survived the Srebrenica genocide. From July 11 to July 22, 1995, more than 8,372 Bosnians, mostly men and boys, were rounded up and killed. Amongst them were his father and all three of his brothers, and in total he lost about 70 members of his family. Uh, Professor Senahed authored a book called The Fate of Srebrenica, in which he describes the fate of Srebrenica from the arrival of the Ottomans until the genocide in July 1995. He's one of the rare Bosnian men who managed to overcome what is called the road of death and survive it. Um, and that was by walking for one week through mountain crags without any food or water to avoid and that was through the Serbian front lines. Professor Senahid holds a master's degree in chemistry and is currently a lecturer of chemistry as well as uh, a laboratory technician at the City University of New York. Professor Senahid remained uh, in Srebrenica during the siege uh, until 1995, that is, and he currently resides in Queens with his wife and three children since his arrival in the U.S. And of course, more can be said, and inshallah, we're going to get more into his story and the details of it. But we want to start, inshallah, with um, actually before jumping in, if uh, Musab, if you want to say anything before we start and we can pick it up from there, inshallah. I also would like to extend a warm welcome to our guest, uh, mashallah. And inshallah, this will be a two part uh, series. Uh, the first part will be on uh, on the history of Bosnia, uh, a summarized history of Bosnia, and uh, the second part will be on uh, the Srebrenican genocide. Uh, so in this uh, episode, we're going to cover um, the history of Bosnia, and I want to remind the the viewers to uh, like the video, uh, you know, drop a comment and subscribe, and share this so that other people can also benefit. And I turn it back over to uh, Mona Nasulo. So, Professor Senahed, I, I guess as um, Hafiz Musab just mentioned, that we would like to first probably get into the history of Bosnia. And um, I guess we can start off from before Islam came there and then, you know, afterwards and how Islam coming there and uh, what were the dynamics that sort of led up into um, the tension that uh, later turned into the war that everyone is uh, familiar with. So without uh, further ado, inshallah, I'll let you start from wherever really you'd like to start from with, when it comes to the history of Bosnia. Okay, so assalamu alaikum to everyone. Right. And uh, uh, Bosnia had a very turbulent history. So uh, for Bosnia, the word Bosnia, I mean a country, and the state of Bosnia, first time mentioned in the ninth centuries, the word Bassano in the old Slavic language does mean the life. And uh, it started in the valley of Sarajevo. And uh, now we have uh, uh, one river in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which one is uh, starting uh, close to the Sarajevo in the bottom of a mountain, Igman, and it's called Bosnia too. So that stream and in, over there, it's starting first. So 
from uh, seven centuries to the ninth century, the history of territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina is not well known, but it is assumed that they were organized in the local uh, uh, from the middle of the ninth centuries. There are sources that confirm that uh, affiliation of of uh, uh, state of Bosnia and from mm, 925 to the kingdom when it started to develop kingdom of Croatia and started also to to develop the state of Bosnia in the 10th centuries the eastern origin of Bosnia was ruled by the uh, Serbian prince but in 11 centuries, I mean, in the middle of 11 centuries, the territory of today's Bosnia and Herzegovina belonged to the Kingdom of Croatia. Around the, the year 950, the Byzantines emperor uh, took a land. So as the area around the, the source of the Bosna River and it is upper, the present day field of Visoko and Sarajevo. So the first ruler in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I mean, that was Herzeg wasn't Herzegovina in that time. The first ruler that is mentioned was uh, uh, Ban Boric in the 11th centuries. And uh, in that time, the, if we are look at cities now, nowadays Bosnia and Herzegovina, in that time, the territory of Bosnia used to be uh, today's uh, areas around Sarajevo, cities Vogosca, Ilias, Breza, Vares, Kakanj, Bobovac, Sutjeska, Lepenica, and Lashva. <clears throat> so the first well-known that ruler, as I said, and he ruled Bosnia from uh, 1150 to 1163, the uh, was was ba, uh, Ban Boric. The Ban is uh, is a, a title of a leader, something like Duke. The second more important Ban was Kulin, who can said to be the founder of Bosnian Banovina, and he was ruled Bosnia from 1180 to 1204. In that time, Bosnia developed much more and. A, economic, political, and trade development is visible for this uh, this time when he ruled. And uh, very important to, to mention that uh, uh, in the, his time when he ruled, Kulin Ban, he, he wrote the Charter of Ban Kulin. That was document which one guarantee the traders from uh, Republika of uh, Dubrovnik and other traders to go through Bosnia and Herzegovina. According to the Charter, Bosnian Bank Kulin promises to Knez Krvaš and all other people of Dubrovnik full freedom of movement and trading across the country. The Charter is written in the two languages, Latin and uh, Bosančica. In the, that time uh, Bosnia used uh, Cyrillic uh, uh, letters but it's named Bosančica. So in that time uh, we could see if we, if we, if we uh, read or if we know that uh, charter that uh, uh, Bosnian bands and later Bosnian kings they they respected, uh, they used to be very respectful people and respectful leaders and respected others. So, this charter is solid proof of Bosnian statehood. In that time, we could say that Bosnia used to be state, that Bosnia had uh, its own ruler, throne, that is own authority, and that is an organized country. Bosnia has all the characteristics of medieval feudal state in that time. Ban Kulin was a Bosnian ban that ruled Bosnia from 1180 to 1204. And uh, after his, uh, during the 13th century, Saxon mine, 
miners came uh, to Bosnia and opened mines. They, they some of that uh, still working now. For example, for Inita Srebrenica, Olovo, and Križevo. That's uh, that was Prusi. I mean German, Germans. It, it wasn't German in that time. That was Prussia, and uh, they they first opened that mines. Uh, in that time, very important to mention that uh, Bosnian people had his own church. I mean, when it is a Christianity split in the, uh, Catholicism and Orthodox, uh, Bosnia, uh, Bosnian people, they had uh, uh, named Bosnian church. That church wasn't Catholics and wasn't uh, Orthodox, and it's church uh if it was accused from a uh, rim i mean rome and visited as heresy so in 1203 he convented the general assembly of the people of bilinopole bilinopole is a place in zenica and now we have a stadium of soccer uh, bilinopole but when uh, representation of bosnia and herzegovina usually play that games when it is uh, uh, hosting so in the Bilinopole, uh, obviously there were more political than religious interests in that move, and in that time, uh, Ban Kulin uh, converted to the Catholicism, as will be shown by the later wars. That is definitely wasn't religion issue; it was a political uh, problem and issue, which were titulary directed against the Church of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but in uh, reality for the grand rearrangement of the country. So after Ban Kulin came, uh, Ban Mate Ninoslav, in mention and the successor of, of Kulin in uh, 1230, after series of wars, he annexed some cities close to the Adriatic Sea. And he also developed the state of Bosnia and Herze Bosnia. That's not Herzegovina still yet. Okay. So uh, on that, if I can ask one question. Yes, you, sir. You say Bosnia Herzegovina. Are these two separate places or is this two names for the same place? Or is this uh, in addition, a later addition to an original? Uh, why is there two names? So, in uh, as I said, and as I mentioned, in the 11 and 12, uh, uh, 13 and uh, 14th century, before then uh, Ottomans came, mm -hmm. uh, that they had different rulers. So, mm -hmm. as I said, Bosnia started to uh, to create uh, and form as a state around Sarajevo, but Herzegovina is close to the close to the uh, Adriatic Sea. And okay. it, in that time, that was different, uh, different rulers. Yes, and that's why. But later, I will tell you, uh, it was all territory used to be uh, Bosnia. But why Herzegovina get the name? Okay. And when so, did when did Bosnia become Christian? Uh, Bosnia become Christian like uh, 10th century, 11th centuries. I mean, when it is uh, when it is um, first mentioned. It says that uh, people used to be Christian, but as I told you, in the 11th century, Christianity split, but uh, Bosnia had its own ch That church wasn't what are Catholics now, what are Orthodox. It was Bosnian. That's why they call that people like heretics, that hereza does mean people who are doubt in, 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 in believing, that they are wrong belief. Mm -hmm. That's Byzant and uh, rome that's all of them that used to be powerful they didn't didn't trust and they tried to convert bosnian people to to uh, them church i mean to catholicism or to orthodoxity you so also mentioned that in the ninth century um at that time it was a more of a i guess you can say almost a tribal society before you know um or that it's assumed that it was more of a tribal society so is the and you mentioned the uh, Croatian and you mentioned Serbian and you mentioned Bosnian. What is this? Uh, are these three uh, different different from each other in terms of uh, tribe, in terms of nation, or in terms of 
race or how are they different from each other? Or are they actually just one people? And the differentiation came later on, on a religious basis, maybe. Yeah, differentiation, you you have a, a different opinion and depends uh, who you ask. Okay. If you ask Serbs, they will definitely told you that most population used to be Serbs, I mean Orthodox. Yeah. But if you ask uh, he, uh, uh, people from Croatia, they will say they used to be Croats, but not Croats, not Serbs, not Bosniaks in that time. Definitely, it used to be like tribes, but uh, there is uh, definitely proof that uh, Illyrs tribes used to be live over there. But uh, Croats and uh, Serbs tribes, they are Slavins. They coming from another places. Oh, okay. No, yeah, so there is a tribal difference. Right, tribal difference and uh, definitely successor of that uh, Illyrs tribes are Bosniaks and Albanians and the Balkan. In so Western and, Balkan. The, and the Serbians, you or did you say they were Orthodox? Yes. Okay, and the Croatians, they would be considered what? Are they also Orthodox? Uh, no, they are Catholics. Catholics. Okay, and yes. so so you'd had the Catholics, you had the Orthodox, and then the Bosnian before Islam came, they had their own church, you said, and they Correct. were called heretics by both sides. Correct. Okay, yeah. okay, interesting. Correct. So, so, and uh, after, after, uh, after Ban uh, Kulin and after Ban uh, Matej Ninaslav, the, there is a dynasty of Kotromanic. Kotromanic, uh, so Nilos, Ninaslav was succeeded by Stepan I, it is named in, in 1290, Kontromanic, the new Bosnian ban, and he had power, uh, big power, and he developed Bosnia to the Drina. Now is Drina is also border between Serbia and Bosnia. It's okay. a river, right? River, river Drina, yes. So the the uh, and uh, he he developed Bosnia, and uh, he had a problem with uh, with uh, Catholic. I will not say Croats because not yet Croats yet with the Catholic uh, uh, bands uh, Pavel Šubić, and uh, he defeat him definitely, and he he developed Bosnia uh, to the Adriatic Sea, and uh, after him is uh, coming uh, uh, soon Ban Stefan II Kotromanić. And he adds the area of whom in that time was whom now is Herzegovina, mm. and to to Bosnia, that was uh, in the uh, 13th century. That was uh, Stepan II Kontromanić. He was born. He ruled, and he add whom I mean now Herzegovina. What is Herzegovina to the Bosnia? And the entire territory from Neretva to Cetina becomes part of Bosnia also. So Ban Stepan II Kontromanić also annexed Bosnia and a large part of Dalmatia. Dalm Dalmatia, so Dalmatia is Croatia right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, from Dubrovnik place and to Split. So Split, uh, it is it is coast uh, of Adriatic Sea. And Bosnia also annexes Donje Krajine, Usor and Soli. And it is developed to the east, west, north, and uh, and the south also. So, and uh, uh, in that time, uh, Ban Stepan II Kotromanić supports the Bosnian church. But as I said before, Ban Kulin, he converted to Catholicism, but the uh, population stay to believe own church. And uh, Ban Stepan, because he was a power, powerful uh, leader and Ban, he supports the Bosnian church, which begins him in the conflict with Pope. And in order to apprise him, he agrees in 1340 to give the Franciscans, but Franciscans are like uh, uh, Catholic missionaries, great freedom of action in Bosnia. And he himself officially uh, uh, said that he will also uh, uh, convert to the Catholicism, but that uh, population stay 
and uh, that uh, uh, Pope and uh, uh, they don't have any influence to the Bosnian church. That was agreement. Mm -hmm. so was the Pope seen as a leader uh, for, for the Bosnians as well in that time? No, Pope no. was uh, as what is uh, right now. So that it is the main leader for all Catholics. And and, uh, and the seat was in in Roma, I mean Rim, when it is right now. Okay, in Vatican City? Yeah. So, so I have in, another question. That is something you mentioned just, uh, you also mentioned that... Um, the uh, I think you said the Germans or uh, there were some they came and they opened mines. Yes. So what, Yo, uh, what is mine in, we in cannot Russia? say we cannot say Germans at that time. That was uh, right. Russians. Like uh, like uh, the most most known tribe of of uh, uh, Germ Germans tribe that yeah. Prussia tribes that was Prussia in that time country. Mm -hmm. I mean the not country kingdom or or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, 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 Sassi, they right. came and they opened mines. Yes. What what was mined in uh, Bosnia specifically? That was metals usually. That is uh, gold, silver, uh, 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 like uh, silver, gold, uh, zinc, copper. Those kind copper. Of yes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. If I understand. And later, when we when we when we are going to talk about uh, genocide in Srebrenica, Srebrenica is very important also because uh, Srebrenica has a mine of uh, silver, and the name on uh, our native language Srebro does mean silver. And mm -hmm. I will explain later about. But let's, as you said, we will do first uh, uh, Bosnian history, and I will introduce you about Sre Srebrenica history later. Before then, I talk of, of genocide that you understand, and that uh, that uh, people understand much better about genocide because people very confusing because uh, everyone writing about genocide and uh, with uh, some truth, with some uh, half a truth things, with some confusion, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So that uh, in, in 1353, Ban Stepan Kotromanic died and it, it was buried in the monastery in Visoko. Visoko is city next to the Sarajevo. So after his death, Tvrtko first Kotromanic came to the power and he was only 15 years old in that time. And because he was young, the, the uh, enemy from east and from west try to use uh, uh, his uh, weakness because he they thought that he is uh, young and try to conquer bosnia uh, bosnia so not herzegovina as i, as I said whom was uh, included in bosnia by uh, ban stepan second kontromanic so unfortunately for them uh, uh tvrtko first kontromanic he still developed Bosnia and he defeated his enemies. So, mm -hmm. and uh, Tvrtko first Kotromanic became not anymore as a, as a ban and he declared himself as a king, but not king of Bosnia. It was first king of Bosnia and in that was tribes and people what we call Serbs, Serb, Serbs, Serbs, but it wasn't like Serbia, what is now. But he was king, definitely first king of uh, Serbia, Bosnia, and Primorje. Primorje does mean places next to the uh, Adriatic Sea. So the area it used to of to the, some part of Croatia and uh, uh, big part of Serbia today. Serbia, Sanjak. Then Zeta and Southern Dalmas Dalmatia. Dalmatia is a part of of Croatia, so close to the close to the Adriatic Sea. So in also including the Adriatic coast from Dubrovnik to Boca Kotor. So uh, as part of all this success, Tvrtko was crowned king of Serbs, Bosnia, and Primorje 1377. Most likely. He was crowned in the monastery Mileševa, and that is a place is now in the in the today's Sanjak. I mean, uh, yeah. 
After that of the Hungarian king in 1382, uh, and uh, King Tvrtko used the opportunity and sent the Bosnian army to the part of Dalmatia and took complete control over Dalmatia together with the islands and annexed split Trogir Šibenik, that is cities in Croatia now, in the coast of Adriatic Sea, and the islands to the Bosnia, Brač, Korčula and Hvar. So in the last decade of his uh, reign, uh, King Tvrtko was faced with Ottoman because Ottomans uh, start to come in Europe. I mean, in 1389, Ottomans defeat uh, Serbs, I mean, uh, uh, in, in Battle on Kosovo, uh, 1389, that was 1389. And, uh, but Ottomans didn't come to the Bosnia because uh, in, in, in that time, King Tvrtko was uh, very strong. And they uh, probably afraid, or they didn't have uh, so power to to come, and they wait wait around like eighty years, probably to attack Bosnia. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, in an, the fourteen sixty three, the first attack of Ottomans to the Bosnia came with uh, Mehmed, Sultan Mehmed II Fatih, conqueror, and he took some parts of uh, eastern part of Bosnia, uh, today's eastern part of Bosnia, the, the, across the uh, river Drina. So, uh, and uh, for just a couple months, all territory of uh, Today's uh, almost all territory of today's Bosnia felt under Ottomans. But when we are talking about Islam, uh, Islam didn't come with Ottomans. So Islam came before. Mm. Because uh, as I said that uh, Bosnian church uh, was uh, east and west they thought that Bosnian church is hereza. They mean, I mean that they are uh, uh, not correct believers. And that's why they was, uh, that people used to be expelled. And that people used to be uh, discriminated. Mm. So uh, that's why when the trades and the traders come from uh, Middle East or from somewhere, they bring some, some Islam. But it is very important also to say that that Bosnian church had elements of Islam. Uh, people used to uh, to pray five times, but they didn't pray as we pray, right? Mm. <laughs> so they, they pray. Uh, definitely, they had a cross, and uh, they they believe they believe in the two gods. I mean, it was like uh, whatever is happened good, they said, oh, this this is from good God. Whatever is happened bad, they say, oh, this is from evil or bad God. Mm. I mean, it is, uh, it is not clear 100% what they more believe, like uh, bad God or evil, but definitely they include evil. Mm -hmm. And they say whatever is bad coming, coming from evil, or bad God. So what percentage of the population do you think at that point had uh, been exposed to Islam or had accepted Islam before the Ottomans uh, came on the scene? Not big percent mm -hmm. percentage. Definitely it was uh, individually or groups of people or some places, villages. Okay. Yes, they, they believe, but not too much. Okay. But when, when Ottomans came, when Ottomans came, because Ottomans was inferior, uh, comparing to the Balkans people, they a lot of I mean more people used to be, they they know how to read, how to write, uh, and they used to be religious, and they know how to manage uh, state, how how to manage armies and that things you understand, mm -hmm. uh, comparing to the to the people what was in Bosnia, 
and uh, they definitely did not force i mean ottomans did not force people in bosnia uh to take islam right and they give them freedom they give them freedom and when when the population saw that the rulers i mean that is uh, people who are came are uh, uh, not willed that they are very friendly and uh, good and it is better for them people uh, massively take islam mm. that's why and it was uh, in and it has happened uh, in uh, 15 centuries that's uh, uh, in and uh, in the, the, that time i mean for 50 20 years uh, maybe all population or very high percentage over 70 percent definitely uh, uh, take islam as a religion but the part uh, uh, south part of bosnia now called herzegovina it it didn't felt under ottomans and uh, uh, the duke stepan kosacha he said, I am going, I am going to defend this part. And he really did for a couple of years, and probably 10 years. Uh, and after 10 years, it was conquered also. That area was conquered by uh, Ottomans. But Italians and the Rome, they give uh, Stepan Kostaca title and crown and the biggest title in that time, I, I mean, Middle Age used to be uh, Herzog. Herzog. When you say that someone is Herzog, that means it's uh, be the biggest title what is possible. They give him a uh, title Herzog because and crown because he defeated. I mean, he defended that area and that land, and it is small part. Uh, 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 several cities uh, around Mostar, close to the close to the uh, Adriatic Sea. That part was proclaimed named Herzegovina by him, mm. or Herzeg's land, hence Herzeg's country, Herzeg's state, something like that. Mm. And that's why name of Herzegovina is coming from uh, Stepan Kostaca because he had the title uh, Herzog. So that was a collapse of uh, Bosnian state. And uh, uh, that was how uh, Ottomans definitely conquered and take over Bosnia. Mm -hmm. So did that... Um... Obviously, when the Ottomans came in, um, that created a sort of, uh, is that what's created sort of this resentment between the, the Serbian, Croatian, those who are still Christian? Um, yeah, they maintained some sort of resentment to the Bosnians who accepted Islam then. Is it because they saw them as being part of those people who came in and conquered? Uh the ottomans conquered first to serbia mm. so as i said 80 years ago i 80 years before then bosnia and it and after conquering uh, serbia the serbian people i mean serbians dukes and the uh, serbians leader they they become vassals vassal that means someone who is uh, like uh, uh, together with with Ottomans, they have like and uh, but but in that time, as I told, the Ottomans didn't force anyone to 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 take religion, and uh, uh, some of Serbians, yes, definitely they took Islam, they convert to the Islam, but not a lot. Mm. But uh, reason, my, by my opinion, and uh, by opinion of uh, historian people, reason why in Bosnia people took Islam uh, is because uh, the damn church always was attacked 
with uh, another churches and uh, it is, was uh, proclaimed as uh, uh, heretics people who are heretics i mean uh, hereza th that don't believe correctly and that people used to be discriminated and that people all, in uh, all in Byzantium and uh, also in uh, uh, Rome and everywhere uh, who are discriminated they find the place to live in Bosnia because in Bosnia used to be freedom mm -hmm. so that we have uh, another sect another sect which one uh, started to develop in Bulgaria and uh, nowadays Macedonia but a lot of in Bosnia too also when we call Bogomils yeah that's Bogomils it is uh, continuing to and it is uh, uh, lean to the Bosnian church with little bit differences mm -hmm. and that Bogomils gathered in Bosnia during the uh, 13th centuries and 12th centuries because they, they were expelled from everywhere in Europe because no one tolerated them religion or in, except the Bosnian church in Bosnia. So it was an amalgamation of a lot of ostracized groups that were there and that's why it became easier for them to uh, accept uh, Islam basically on a much larger scale. Yeah, I think so. That was, um, no, um, I think so that is the most important thing because as I told you it was uh, some people who had Islam already uh -huh. that the traders from Middle East or somewhere they, they bring it and another thing is also because uh, Bosnian church had elements of Islam in the them uh, 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 learning. So they had been Islamicized a bit beforehand already. So that made them, uh, that means they were influenced. So it made them much uh, more receptive when Islam yes. actually came. So. Correct. Interesting. That makes sense. So moving forward, I think uh, going towards now closer Post to the time of the genocide uh, in Srebrenica and the war uh, in Bosnia. Um, or even like a short synopsis from like post. Yeah. Okay. Let me mention if you if you allow me, it is very important uh, five minutes to explain uh, what happened in 19th centuries when the Ottomans, uh, uh, the sure. Bosnia used to be Vilayet. I mean, state in in uh, uh, Turkish. I mean, Ottoman Empire. Only one, which one with uh, with its with the uh, highest uh, uh, recognition from Ottomans. I mean, empires, right? And in 19th centuries, when uh, uh, Ottomans start to, to become weak because Russia and France and Europeans, uh, uh, all countries uh, uh, made agreement to, to do war against Ottomans. Mm. And when Ottomans uh, left, Bosnia uh, become a part of uh, Austro-Hungarian because it is uh, in the... In the uh, 1875 in Berlin, that was agreement that Bosnia supposed to be uh, part of Austro-Hungary. -Hung mm. And mm. in that time, in that time, uh, nationalism bloom. In Bosnia used to be, all people used to be Bosniak or Bosniaks. And no Croats, no Serbs in Bosnia in that time. But from East, from Serbia and from West, from Croatia, that was big influence that uh, all Catholics uh, declared themselves as uh, Croats and all uh, Orthodox in Bosnia declared themselves as Serbs. And very important thing also that uh, in the 17th and 18th centuries, Ottomans bring a lot of people from uh, nowadays Romania and the area of Vlaška, Vlax. And that Vlax, they, they are Christians, Orthodox. And in the 19th centuries, all Vlax in Bosnia, in that when happened, I mean, when uh, Bosnia, uh, when they decide that Bosnia is going to be part of uh, Austro-Hungary, uh, uh, all Vlachs convert to the Serbs. Mm. So, yes. 
And the, the official language in Bosnia used to be Bosnian language from uh, 12 and 11 centuries. And there is, uh, there is a lot of proofs about that. But in uh, uh, 19, uh, 1907, uh, there is one uh, high hair uh, uh, representative of Hungarian a source his source used to be uh, from serbia and he banned bosnian language and uh, nationality bosniaks so that's that's uh, in uh, 1907 definitely austro uh, hungary uh, prohibit to use uh, bosnian language and language name used to be after that serbo-croatian in bosnia and what uh subhanallah what's it sounds a lot like what happened in turkey as well right after uh kamal mustafa kamal Atatürk, he also he didn't ban the language of course but he banned the script uh the use of the arabic persian script uh and uh you know he uh, he changed it to the latin script what script was used for writing um, the Bosnian language? I imagine it would have been the Latin script before, or is there a totally separate? You, you, you mean before then? Uh, uh, during the before time. Before the Ottoman came? Before and during the Ottomans. Before the Ottoman came, that was uh, uh, the name was Bosanchica, it was Cyrillic. Hmm. Cyrillic scripts. And uh, after Ottomans came, uh, it was. Uh, mix Arabic and Cyrillic, Bosanchica and Arabic, and uh, that is was like both. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how did they enforce the language ban? Like if somebody spoke the language at home, for example, of course they would not be able to, uh, but this means in the public sphere, right? Uh, in the public domain, nobody was allowed to use, and as an official language, it was removed. Is that right? Yes. Wow. But that that is everything is uh, politi political political uh, uh, politics is behind because uh, yes. you know in that time I mean in uh, 19th century is 19th century uh, it was big mess uh, with language in Serbia mm. because it it wasn't standardized language and. Uh, it uh, uh, people didn't understand each other from city to city. It was uh, uh, like a mix of Bosnian, Russian, Bulgarian, something like that. And Vuk, Vuk Stefanovic Karadzic, he standardized Serbian language, but he usually uh, took a words from Bosnian language and he called it Serbian. Okay. And after that, when it is Ottomans, removed. When it is uh, Bosniaks, became weak. And nobody is uh, to cover them or uh, help them to give them any rights. I mean, it is started to little by little uh, banning the language and after that, that uh, nationality. And so from uh, beginning on 20th century until 1974, the people who are Bosniaks now, who are declared Bosniaks, I mean mostly Muslims in Bosnia and Herzegovina, they used to be undeclared people, no nationality, because they didn't price, no one priced them na nationality. Mm. Even in the, in the Tito's Yugoslavia, in the, in the, uh, when used to be socialism, it was undeclared. For example, in a uh, in, uh, diploma of my father, it says name, name of father, date of birth, place of birth, nationality, undeclared. Mm. If you say I am Bosniak, they say it does not exist. Wow. If you say oh, whatever, you could be Serb or Croat, okay? So because in after big war, 1918, it was formed Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. That was name of country. And after that become, uh, in 1929, that uh, that country changed in the name uh, Kingdom of Yugoslavia. But nobody cared about Bosniaks 
and 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 Bosnia. But Bosnia used to be included in that country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I was just curious: uh, is Bosnian? Is there? Um, is there still a, a people that 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 can write Bosnian in the Arabic script? You mentioned language earlier, or was it ever written in the Arabic? Yes, script? but very few. Very few. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, but yeah, now we are in Bosnia. We are you you uh, we are using Latinic mm-hmm. mostly, mostly. So, but we understand Cyrillic also because uh, during the Tito's Yugoslavia, it was equalized uh, uh, Cyrillic and Latinic uh, uh, scribes, and we learn in school in first and second grade. And everyone in my time and older, we knew both, mm-hmm. but. Uh, uh, Arabic and other used to be like voluntary. That's why we have just few people who are mm. who are able to write Arabic. Mm. Cool. And also before uh, before I let you um, continue, um, I, I had one more question. Of where course. Is this, where does Albania uh, and and Kosovo kind of play into this whole thing? Because they're also um, you know uh, they're also Muslims, uh, Muslim states. Do they also share some of that history uh, with Bosnia? Are they seen as like uh, you know a, a similar um, culture? Is the is the language you guys understand each other's languages? What is the relationship between those countries? No, no, they have a very different language. So uh, as I told, uh, our language, I mean Bosnian language, is uh, most uh, Slavic language, mm-hmm. but they have very different language. But them sources are almost the same. I mean, Ilirs, that's a long time ago, uh, 12, 15 centuries ago, they are successor of Ilirs as we. Mm-hmm. But uh, we are uh, in, in a sandwich between uh, Slavic tribes used to be. That's why we have a, a very different language. And... Uh, Islam also mostly came for them came uh, through Ottomans. Mm-hmm. And you said that they, they they were the Ottomans came to them first, right? They accepted Islam, or they were taken first by the Ottomans, the Kosovo and that area. Ottoman, yes, uh, Ottomans uh, come to, but in that time, in that time uh, in on Kosovo, uh, not a lot uh, Albanians. Mm-hmm. It was a mixture between Albanians and uh, Christians, what are now Serbs. Mm. Okay. So, yes, and uh, that was battle of Kosovo used to be 1389, that is 14th century. Mm. The end of 14th century, but uh, they came in Bosnia, they just entered in Bosnia in uh, 1463. Mm-hmm. Cross the river Drina. I mean, uh, 80, 90 years later than than uh, than in Kosovo and Serbia. Wow. So I want to uh, conclude this episode at the around the fifty-five minute mark. So I'll I'll give you another five minutes to reach wherever you want to reach. Uh, you know, before we do the next episode uh, on the genocide. Okay. So yes, uh, I could. I could say uh, importance of uh, uh, Bosniaks uh, in the Second War. So mm-hmm. in the Second War, because Bosniaks uh, mostly they had Islam, and uh, uh, but in general, in general, in last ten centuries, East and West. I mean, uh, uh, leaders of Catholics and Orthodox, they try to divide and they grab as much as possible territory of Bosnia. That was always over there used to be wars. And in the Second World also, the, 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 uh, the fascist military, I mean, uh, paramilitary later, it used to be paramilitaries of Serbia, they tried to make uh, great Serbia and that them name used to be Chetniks, and they kill all Croats and Bosniaks to, to make a great Serbia state. They tried to make great Serbia, but as revenge, it was, uh, 
it was uh, established uh, independent Croats state and all Bosnia used to be included in independence Croat state so that, uh, and uh, a lot of Bosniaks in uh, second war used to be killed and expelled so you when you say second you're saying second uh, second war yes so, okay I said second war 1941 1942 okay. And that's why uh, uh, Bosniaks uh, later they they try to survive, and uh, uh, a lot of, of them uh, go to the Tito's uh, Tito's army. Tito's army called partisans, and they won war in the, on the Balkan. And after that, they rule Yugoslavia, and they make a socialistic. Uh, Republic of Yugoslavia and Bosnia was included one of six states in Yugoslavia. So now, you see, in, the, in the 1943, 1943, this area is used to be Yugoslavia, which so, uh, and, and that Yugoslavia uh, was created from six six republics. That was Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Serbia, Macedonia, and Montenegro. But in in Serbia, it was included two areas also, Kosovo and uh, Vojvodina. So mm -hmm. that was Tito's Yugoslavia. And mm -hmm. in that time, I mean, in that time, in both uh, Serbia, I mean, during the war, they tried to make a great Serbia and that's why uh, cross, they came across the river Drina and uh, the, some also domestic population of uh, Serbs in Bosnia support them. And uh, uh, that was uh, uh, genocide, but no one talk about that genocide. Mm. And it, it's used to be genocide, definitely. And the people, people are... Uh, a lot of people, and especially in eastern part of Bosnia, used to be uh, killed and expelled. Mm. Now, yes, look at this. This is this is, for example, River Drina, River Drina, and it is a border between Serbia and Bosnia. And uh, over here is Srebrenica, for example. Yes. Yeah, you see Zvornik, over here Srebrenica, Bratuna, Zvornik, yeah, that, that area, Visegrad, uh, Foča, that usually that people are, people are uh, struggle in the Second World. But Tito won, and Tito, Tito, I mean, uh, ruled country and make a good country with freedom to everyone, equal freedom and equal to for for uh, study for work for everything that was a nice ruled country and nice but problem used to be for bosniaks that bosniaks not used to be nation yet mm. that's mean bosniaks they call undeclared or sometimes they could say just muslim my muslim is a uh, does mean religion. Muslim could be French, Italian, Arab, whoever is uh, uh, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in 1974, is 1974 by amendment in the constitution in Yugoslavia, the Bosniaks get nation, and that nation was declared by name Muslims with uh, capital M. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but not right and not correct nation, we supposed to be Bosniaks and we used to be Bosniaks for centuries. Wow. And this is all 20th, early 20th century. Yes. Okay, well. Cool. With that, inshallah, um, I guess we can conclude uh, this session. Okay, inshallah. Uh, do you want me to conclude? Okay. Yeah. So, so should I start again for the second session, a uh, separate introduction, or do you want to use the same? We'll do, we'll do a second session, inshallah. So for this one, thank you, uh, Professor Sanahid.
um, for uh, you know honoring us. Uh, we really You're welcome. This was a very educative conversation. You know, personally, I didn't know much about uh, Bosnia, and uh, you really were able to um, you know help me understand a lot. So uh, I thank you for that, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of the viewers will also um, you know feel the same way. Uh, this was very uh, educative. So Jazakumullah khairan. And we look forward to speaking with you uh, about the um, um, specifics of your experience in Srebrenica during the war and uh, what happened there. Inshallah, we're uh, going to have a conversation with you about uh, that experience as well, Inshallah. So we ask everyone to stay tuned, Inshallah. Okay, no problem. So if you have any question, just ask and just... Yeah. I am going to tell you whatever you wish. Inshallah. Oh, we're going to start the second session on the um, on on that part, inshallah. Now, okay. so inshallah, jazakumullah khairan. Thank you for all the viewers, and uh, just a reminder to uh, like the video, subscribe, and uh, share it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.